In this video, we will be using the TensorFlow framework and the Keras API to try and classify and predict the location of circles in an image. So our image will consist of circles and squares at random location in the source image. And our classifier should place the small circle wherever there is a circle in the original image. So we will start by generating the data set that we will be required for training. So, a thousand pairs of images and labels. Then we will create the CNN architecture that will be able to solve this problem. We will write a custom loss function for this specific application. Then, using these, we will train the CNN and look at the results. Now, I recommend that you have a basic understanding of how a CNN works. And I will put some video links where you can go and understand that. I provide a basic overview here for our specific application. So these are the image pairs, so the image and the label. The CNN can be thought of as a mathematical function that changes its, beha its behavior based on these weights. So there will be, a, you can think of it as a vector of numbers. If we change that, the input-output relationship changes. Ideally, there is one set of these numbers, so one specific vector that will give us the, the required input-output relationship. Our goal is to find that by performing some numerical operation iteratively. In the beginning, since this weight is random, we will not get the desired results. So this is what we would expect, but this would be random. We have written a loss function that can quantify the difference, the degree of difference between the predicted image and the image that we want it to have. So if these images are close to each other, so our predicted output is as desired, the loss function will be low. Otherwise, the higher the degree of difference, the higher this number will be. And this image is propagated through our convolutional neural network. And we get some result. We calculated the loss function between the predicted image and the image that was the label and we get a number. Depending on this loss function, we try to move this vector, these weights, in a direction such that our input-output relation is closer to what we expect. And by repeating this process over and over again, we slowly start to converge to the weights that will give us the ideal input-output relation. Let's now, look, let's now look at the code. So this is the code that creates a single instance of image and label pairs. It takes as argument the number of shapes we want in an image, the height and the width of the image. The first step that we do is allocate blocks of memory for both the image and the label. Note here that the image has three channels, RGB, while the label is just a black and white image, so we have a single channel. Now for the number of shapes that we want in the image, we run a for loop, each time calculating the random location for x and y coordinates, and then we sample this random number, and this would run, this would, this statement will be true half the time. So half the time we put a circle in the image, and half the time we put a square. When we put this circle, we also put the circle, the small white circle, inside the label. So this circle corresponds to this small circle and this will give us the sample now we can take a look at this image that we generate so now let's take a look at one sample now each time i run this completely random image is created also the colors of this is random such that the convolutional neural network does not use the color as a parameter to help it identify if it is a circle or a square. Now let's take a look at the CNN architecture. So our CNN consists of three convolutional layers. Uh, each layer has different number of feature maps. So the first time we take the image which has three channels and after passing to the first convolution we have 16 channels. The kernel size is 5 and this is chosen to be big enough to capture these uh, edges and these curves. 
the padding has to be same because we don't want our image to become smaller as it propagates through the convolutional neural network. Uh, the activation functions we have chosen to be ReLU and the kernel initializer is has been chosen to be a normal distribution. Now I'm not sure if, th if this is required, but keep in mind that uh, convolutional neural networks of this form are a little bit hard to converge. So the hyperparameters are really important to set properly. So, so these a lot of these are vestigial components from when I was trying to mess with it. For example, the L2 regular, regularizer is no longer being used. Okay, so the second convolutional layer has 32 feature maps. And finally, for the last layer, we bring it back to one. So this corresponds to a single channel, which is black and white. Let's run this. Okay, so you can see in the summary that the input shape is an image of RGB, three channels, and the output image has a single channel. So we have to define a loss function for a specific application such that if the predicted image is, is close to the true image, we have a low loss function. And the more the difference there is, the higher the loss function. And we, we do that by taking the difference between these two matrices, squaring those, and then taking the mean of the all the elements in the matrix. Okay, now using this create data sample, we will create a thousand samples, and this will be our data set. Let's, look, let's take a look at one of the image from the sample. So now this is not being randomly generated. Each time the same image appears here from the data set. And just let's verify the shape. And yes, there are a thousand samples. So this first uh, number represents the batch size of the data set. So actually the number of elements of the data set. Uh, now we are ready to compile. Uh, keep in mind that this is the optimizer that we are using. Again, uh, this kind of a convolutional neural network is very, very sensitive to hyperparameters. So you might not want to change it. Okay, now we're ready to start the training process. Okay, so now the training is complete. Now we can take a look at the results. First thing I do is generate a test batch. So let me create a new batch for testing. I'm doing this so that I'm not taking the image from the data set because the neural network potentially can memorize those instances. To, so just to show that it performs well for unseen instances, I'm taking a new batch. Now, uh, this is the, the label that we expect. This is the image that we will pass to our network, and this is what we expect. Let's see what we get. Okay, so fairly close, actually. It got a little bit confused some places, but as you can see, it's not, the values here are not very high. Overall, a good result.